WWDC is coming soon with invite expected in the next week or so and the event itself promises to be packed not just with iOS 17, Mac OS somewhere in California, iPad OS, TV and HomePod software but also the new MacBook Air in two sizes packing M3, possibly a Mac Pro and even perhaps our first look at the Apple Reality headset. Let's talk. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell. Okay, over the past couple of weeks I have spent a lot more time building this studio than scripting, so I apologise this is going to be more bullet points uh, that I expand on than the scripted version that I normally do. But of course, if you've got any questions, hashtag IKAveAnswers down in the comments section. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to actually hear the answer to your question. And let's get into it. Let's talk about dates. June the 5th is the most likely date for WWDC. June 5th to the 9th would be the week of WWDC. It is a guess, but it fits. And I think we're likely to get our invites this week, which is going to be exciting. But will it be in person? Probably yes, and I think there is a good reason for that, and it's to do with the hardware, but the hardware is something we'll be talking about in a minute. First, let's talk about the usual WWDC stuff, which is software. First of all, iOS 17 was going to be pretty much a bug fix and optimized release, but Mark Gurman has now said that there will be nice to have most requested features included. So what could those be? Uh, my first most asked for would probably be theme kit and that is basically the ability to change your icons easily which at the minute we can do using shortcuts but it's a right pain changing the customization for things like font which of course android has had forever and for some reason some people think that uh, comic sans is a good choice for their font on their phone this makes me want to die they're wrong those people are wrong Let's just put that right out there. But if you had a handful of font options, much like you have on the home screen now on the iPhone, which is why I think this might actually be plausible, that wouldn't be a bad thing. You know, some curated fonts that look good across the system, they scale well, they actually work, you can read them in apps. Why not? Maybe this is something that is actually on the way. Also, changing your kind of colour theme for the whole operating system. Maybe it's only accent colours. Maybe it is just like on the Mac where you get to choose an accent colour and not the rest of your setup. So you still get dark mode, light mode, and then you know, one colour that kind of flows through the system, maybe that's something that could come. What else has everyone been asking for in uh, in the iPhone? RCS in iMessage. I think this might actually happen. Uh, Apple seems to be very concerned at the moment about the way that antitrust is happening and the amount of regulation that's coming in from Europe and other places. Uh, so maybe this time we see things like the NFC chip being opened up to other apps, but we also see RCS rich communication system in text messages so that finally we do away with the green message blue message dichotomy that basically is the class system in modern society. I don't think it's likely because it seems like it would be a lot of work but also maybe the kind of thing Apple would do at this point. And finally and this is very much my kind of out there question are there app stores is this going to finally come are we going to get alternative app store options i don't think it's a good idea i would be fine with us keeping the app stores that we have because you know we've got apps and these apps are checked properly however if apple's going to have to do it maybe this is the kind of time when this would be rolled out i don't know all of a sudden we're getting USB-C all over the place and all sorts of other stuff that we never expected. So maybe more app stores are coming. And then let's move on to iPadOS, which of course is basically a fork of iOS. So what were we likely to get? Oh, well, some stuff that's left over from last year on iOS 16, I would guess, because that's normally what they do. So maybe we'll get our home screen uh, customization on the iPad for the first time, which we didn't get last year when the iPhone got it, but uh, you know, maybe it's time for that. Maybe a better file manager. I would love them to just bring Finder over to the iPad at this point. If you're gonna try and make your iPad into a Mac, then why not be able to actually manage files properly? That just makes sense to me, but let me know in the comments if you agree. But also I don't think we should be trying to make the iPad into a Mac. Uh, there is a video coming soon which is called iPad Sucks Now and it's your fault. I feel like I might have stolen that name a little bit from John Prosser, but I think he was talking about some else but I think it's important that we talk about this let me know your thoughts and of course if you want to make sure you don't miss that you should probably make sure you've already subscribed uh, watch OS what's going to be coming for watch OS better sleep tracking perhaps I genuinely don't know what anyone else would want on these things I, I think it pretty much does everything and of course you can't come at me at this point with uh, blood glucose monitoring and stuff like that because they'll only be talking software at WWDC stuff that will come to existing Apple watches not new hardware stuff that's not going to be talked about because it never is however 
uh, coming onto the TV and the HomePod. The only thing I can think of over here is going to be maybe better HomeKit integration, maybe more Thread stuff being released. Perhaps they're even just going to feature some good products that are using Thread, but I really can't think of what else they're going to do with that. Um, can you? Unless they're going to add like chat GPT level AI to Siri in the HomePod and then all the other series. In which case, that would be kind of cool. And getting on to the more exciting stuff, for me at least, hardware. So first of all, I think we're going to see M3 get introduced uh, with potentially three nanometer process. I think that's almost guaranteed at this point. We know that TSMC has been making three nanometer chips since December last year. And we also know that Apple has basically bought all of the uh, three nanometer chips that they can make for the first year. Pretty confident that we're going to be getting M3 on three nanometer now could we get the ray tracing that was broken in uh the previous versions of the chips that they really failed on uh i think that's probably the case it might well be that the ray tracing was actually more of an issue in terms of energy management so putting it into a mac rather than into an iphone because i think it was going to go into the a16 chips the pro chips i think that could be a potential so that could be really exciting uh, are we likely to see the mac pro at wwdc I mean, I can't think of a better place to put it. I think they might even announce it with M3-based chips, although M2-based wouldn't make too much of a difference because cooling is normally the issue, and in a big old Mac Pro, you can cool it as well as you want. I still think, uh, and I've already talked about this in a full video, we're going to get modular uh, packages that you can put into your Mac Pro that have full SoCs on board, and that's how it's kind of going to work. It's very different to the way that we've done it in, in the past, but you'll be able to run them parallel, so you'll be able to have two or three M3 Ultra or M2 Ultra or whatever it might be packages inside your Mac Pro. That's my hope, at least. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And of course, the MacBook Air in 13 and, finally, 15-inch sizes. Now, these will probably be coming with M3 inside. That makes the most sense, absolutely, because why would you bring out an M2 again? in a 13 inch or in a 15 inch when it's been out for a year already doesn't make any sense bring the m3 versions that's what's going to come i think this may also mean death to the 13 inch macbook pro fingers crossed finally put it out of its misery and put it out of our misery and take the touch bar with you uh, i think we might also see the 24 inch m3 imac coming at this event now I don't think there's ever going to be a 27-inch iMac again. I don't think that's what's going to happen. Certainly not in the current roadmap. They might do it down the road, but 24-inch uh, is what we get right now. M3 inside it. And why do I think we should get the iMac at WWDC instead of the Mac Mini? Because the Mac Mini is now coming with the Pro chips as well, and it makes much more sense to launch the M3 Mac Mini and M3 Pro Mac Mini at the same time later when the MacBook Pros come. Uh, and bring the iMac in as the desktop option for the M3. Also, that means that Apple is making more money because it's a higher value uh, item when these things first come out. That makes all the sense in the world. And finally, we could see our first look at Apple Reality. It's going to cost three grand-ish. It's going to have dual 4K Sony micro LED displays inside of it, which is just absolutely bonkers. The pixels on these are reported as being like four microns in size, so you don't get the window gating effect between where well, you can kind of see between the pixels. Uh, it's going to also track your eyes. It's going to have non Fresnel lenses, apparently. It's going to have pancake lenses, which make it a little bit flatter, but they're very expensive to do. Just the displays in this thing is going to cost around a grand. So I think Apple is actually going to be losing money on these things. I also, uh, I have a feeling that we're only going to get like a developer kit for this at WWDC. I don't think we're going to see the retail version. I don't think we're going to see quite how it's going to look in the final uh, version. And I think it's probably going to have a pair of M3s powering it, which makes sense because then they could put a single M3 Pro in there because you still get double the performance cores. You get double the GPU cores in a single chip at that point. And then they can launch it at the same time as those MacBook Pros with M3 Pro and M3 Max. And that will probably give you a really, really compelling idea. Now, I don't know what this thing is going to do yet. That is the big question. We don't know what it's going to do. We don't know what the use case is for it. And that's going to make a huge difference to whether people buy it or not. We've heard that Apple has shown it to their own top 100 executives in the Steve Jobs Theatre. So everything is looking good for WWDC. My fingers are crossed for it. 
I hope that we will be seeing it on June the 5th, and I couldn't be more excited. Let me know in the comments if you're excited for this. We will see you in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe if you didn't already. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.